Okay, so let's get on to the uh, Asegra architecture. So there are three basic components to the Asegra architecture. To start out with, the license server. The license server is the central point of control for all licensing activity. It doesn't get involved in the backup per se, no kind of backup data goes through it, but it controls how much of the, of the resource, the space, is actually being used up. And the benefit, so as I said, if you remember back, we're 100% channel driven. So the benefit for this to the MSP is that they can support all the different kinds of environments that their business demands. So if they have a customer who wants to be completely on-premise, they attach to this license server, they can do that. If they have a hybrid system where they have some of it in the cloud, they can do that. If, there is a, if it's a public system, they can do that. So from a single po uh, point, they can manage all their licensing information. They don't have to set up individual licenses. Oh, customer A, Acme Corp, they're, they're on-premise, so I have to make something special for them. So that's the license server. The second part of it is DS system. DS system, that's the multi-tenant server that receives requests for, back, uh, for restores and accepts the data that's being backed up to it. Then there is the DS client. The DS client, that is the component that sits behind the firewall. We are an agentless architecture. Some of our service providers, they, re they have an appliance, they put the DS client on and that's what they install. Some provide uh, our DS client as a virtual image and that's what gets installed. However it gets there, however it gets behind the firewall, the DS client is the agent that goes out into the traditional enterprise, your your file servers, your databases. It collects the data, removes, does the uh, common file, uh, redu removes all the common files, compresses it, encrypts it, and sends it to DS system. Are there things you can do with the physical appliance that you cannot do with the virtual appliance or the other way around? No. I'm thinking about uh, storage. Uh, if you do snapshot integration with fiber channel, we integrate the level of integration. Something you can do with the, with a virtual appliance. Yes, mm -hmm. there is nothing. There is no delta between a physical with between DS client on physical on virtual. Okay. We typically with all the things behind the firewall, we connect to the publicly exposed API, and remove the and extract the information that way. So if it's if it's visible to us, we can get we can get at it. All right. So DS client backs up everything behind the firewall. With respect to the devices that are out there in the wild and in the, uh, in the wilderness. So you have mobile devices and other endpoint devices out there. So DS client collects all the data here, pushes it out to the cloud and into the, into the offsite uh, data center. Our mobile devices, they go direct. They don't go through DS client. They, they go direct, they do the backup directly to there, doesn't matter where they are in the world. Now I've also said that we do, we back up uh, SaaS applications in the clouds. Salesforce, Office 365, Google. DS Client is the, is the component that reaches into these systems, extracts the data, does all it needs to do, and then pushes it up. All right, so there's two data paths. One, from the, from the cloud to DS client in here and one directly. Now, there will be a test at the end of this and Martin is definitely going to be matching these in his whiteboard, so. Okay, machine virtualization. Um, I put it up this slide, not to brag about all our uh, achievements, but to, to kind of demonstrate a trend. So starting with in, when we first came out with our product, one of the things that you'll notice is that RTOs and RPOs are shrinking. They're getting ever smaller and smaller. Really? Big shocker, isn't it? Right? You've got, you know, Battle Metal Restore, you've got CDP, 
all the way down to replication. So we're bringing out replication as part of the toolkit for the backup administrator. The backup, you know, backup is an entire, you know, is a set of tools. And in certain environments, you're going to have the virtual um, administrators who support the virtual hardware. They also do some backup. Likewise, in other organizations, you have backup administrators who put in together best practices to protect their data. So they do the back. Uh, so they do the the backup. So the, the idea is to put in the, the people who are doing backup and are responsible for it, to give them and to reinforce that they have a single pane of glass related to their activity. Right. So currently, today, you can go to our version 12.2 product, and we support a, vi a variety of backup sets, but specifically for virtual machines, um, we support the ability to replicate Inside of a inside within this, uh, the, a single V center, we support the ability to to take a virtual machine and throw it up into the cloud. And what we're adding is the ability to take that image and throw it to another data center, uh, to another V center in another state. So this is where the you know disaster recovery service comes into play. For example, right? You have an MSP who's going to accept this, uh, these replicas in his environment, provide an SLA with respect to being able to mount it, and now you have dis a disaster recover as a service. Is this hmm. all the different types, or is there more than that? So this, this is a screenshot of our Linux DS client, and it supports, you know, uh, you know, MySQL, Progress, Oracle, and we have a Windows DS client, and it supports. There's an overlap, but also a set of uh, a set of backup sets that uh, aren't supported in Linux. So you're taking your VM replication kind of directly head to head with what VMware's already got out in the market. How are you going to compete with that? Um, they're providing a solution for an entirely virtualized environment, relatively simple. I'm going to go back to what I said previously. We do it all. So, so could I answer the question? The, VM, the VMware that's in 5.5 that they announced for free, this is also free, but the concept here is that it's within a platform. And so there are customers that have VMware, but they also have data that's not inside VMware. VMware, there are many customers that are purely virtualized, but there are still many customers that are not 100% virtual. So. The value add that we bring to the table is you can back up data that is virtual. You can also back up and recover data that's not virtual in a single platform. Some of it is in the data center, some of it is not in the data center, and so on. So, but in terms of price and functionality, correct. We're using the VMware uh, APIs that are provided to do this, you know, to this functionality. But the value add is that it's a component of a well, platform that does, that does more. Yeah. So. If I had, you know, if you were, if you were to draw a Venn diagram, you'd have, you have replica, you know, you, you have a couple of different people who do backup, you know, kind of dabble in the backup space. VMware is coming out with coming out with their solution, but our val but our, you know, reason our val our our um, strategy is have a single pane of glass for all of your backup activity, not just virtual. Uh, with respect to virtualization, we are using VADP, and this is just the high-level uh, architecture for what that arc what it's how it works. You're going to require two DS clients, one sitting at your production site, and of course you're going to have you know other servers sitting in there, but you're going to have one vCenter, and you're going to have one DS client sitting at your production site. We're going to use VADP. We're going to pull out the the image or the set of images. We're going to fire that off to the cloud, and on your DR site, you're going to have another DS client receiving that data and pushing it into the vCenter that's there. The DS system, it's only, it plays just a negligible role in the entire process. It goes from here into there. There's 
No charge for that? No charge. It's part of the suite. It's part of the toolkit that a backup administrator is going to have to manage the backup and one have one backup report within their organization. Yeah, it's, it's a use case, right? Not all data needs to get replicated. Some data still needs to just get back, only get backed up if you want to call it only. I, I don't think it's lesser. It's just a different use case. That's all. Well, it's and reduced the, frequency. But replication, you know, solves primarily, you know, originally replication was there to solve a hardware problem. You have a hardware failure, yeah. you know, and that's why, you know, you replicated the data. Backup is really retention, compliance, lots of other kind of things. Uh, and, and it's still there. It's still a valid use case. Still, a, I don't know how many backup companies there are in VM world this year. Over the year, the number seems to go up. But um, so the point is, again, to have one platform that has the ability to cover off different use cases. That's really it. And you can set like uh, different policies so that I could say I want this set of data to be backed up and replicated so it'll be in two places. You and can. if I yeah, restore it, then I'll get charged for that. You can do. You can, absolutely. Okay. What kind of latency, latency is not the right word, um, uh, recovery point between A and B? Um, VMware is like four hours, uh, can be a four hours. And, we and can, so that's, this isn't, um, you know, this isn't synchronous real time. There is, it is scheduled, so it's really about how close that schedule can be is really about how often does the information change. We do uh, do CDP in here. So if a relatively little amount of information changes, you can have this going between here and here every five minutes if, you, if, if that was the case. But if you've got a lot of data in here changing, it's clearly it's going to take a little longer to get it over, uh, over the wire. It's going to depend over your bandwidth and latency. Of course, absolutely.